Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Katie. And with her, as always, is Jesse. Welcome back to our course on saving data in iOS. In this part of the course, we'll start conceptualizing data as serializable dictionaries. With those, you'll reconstruct some Swift types before saving them to different formats in the rest of the course. Let's get started. A dictionary in Swift is strongly typed. You use only one type for the keys and just one for the values. It's a homogeneous collection. If you wanted to think about the properties of a class or struct as a dictionary, that sort of half works. You could use strings for their names, but their values can be any number of types, and even two is too much for a dictionary. If, however, you throw out the type information by using a dictionary whose values are any, the empty protocol that all Swift types implement, then you can create a heterogeneous dictionary where there's no same type restriction for the values. While we wouldn't recommend that you use heterogeneous dictionaries instead of Swift types everywhere in your code, it's helpful to be able to model types this way so that you can translate back and forth from serialized data. In the last part of the course, you used NS coding to encode and decode values for keys. The keys were all strings, and the values were whatever you needed. Decoding the values either involved casting or using methods that required you to know what type of primitive data they represented. So although working with NS coding doesn't directly involve string to any dictionaries, it's not a dissimilar process as you're about to see. We are here in demostart.playground. Please join us. It'll help if you've gone through the last part of the course on NS coding. You'll be translating the code written there to work with all of the other formats covered in this course. Let's have a look at the view of this scene that you'll be saving. Two stickers are visible there. One is this squirrel with a birthday in the distant past. That's a super old squirrel. Is that why its fur is gray? The squirrel just ripped a sign, which has no birthday to speak of, out of the ground and is about to chuck it over the fence due to its offensive imagery. This scene, including its stickers, is made up of strongly typed Swift code. Let's dissolve all of that wonderful runtime goodness into a heterogeneous dictionary that we'll be able to serialize. For all of the keys and values you're about to use in that dictionary, just copy and paste them from above one at a time so you're sure to match everything perfectly. This is not a practice you'd want to use in a real app, but hopefully it'll provide a simple background for you to do better. Let's create a scene dictionary constant and start the translation off from the top with width as a string key with 700 as its value. At this point, the compiler thinks that you'll be working with a strongly typed dictionary with int values. Let's show it just how wrong it is. The next key value pair is has reverse gravity false. And now that you've got two different types of values, you'll be forced to explicitly type the dictionary. You could do that with the auto fix it, but we prefer upfront explicit typing to using as. Either option compiles to the same thing though. For the background, store data by wrapping the UI image in a call to UI image PNG representation. We know that'll work out fine, so force unwrap with a bang. Stickers is an array, and you can start that off with empty brackets. Each sticker is going to be represented by its own dictionary, and you can start the first sticker off the same way. Its name and birthday values get to be used directly. And we can start off with a copy and paste for normalized position. But without NS coding, it's not going to be possible to save the CG point itself. Instead, use its dictionary representation property, which does the same thing that you've been doing manually for everything else in the scene dictionary. In the challenge, you'll make your own similar property, so you won't have to tediously put together a dictionary like this again. Finish off the first sticker by using the same code for its image as you did for the scene background. Don't forget to force unwrap.
Copy the whole sticker dictionary, add a comma after it, and paste it below itself as a starting point for the sign sticker. Instead of squirrel, the sticker's name is sign. And you can deal with its nil birthday by not having a birthday key value pair at all. Finally, just copy the right values over for normalized position. And you can double click on the incorrect image literal and pick the sign from the pop up. This dictionary now represents the kind of data you'll be loading in the following videos. We'd like to be able to initialize a scene with it, but first, you've got to make it so that Sticker can be initialized with these nested dictionaries you wrote. Head on over to Sticker.Swift. If we're not relying on NS coding anymore, Sticker doesn't have to be an NS object or even an object at all. You might as well make it a struct, both to flaunt that and because you won't need reference semantics in anything else you'll be doing in this course. It's no longer valid for this type to implement NS coding, so get rid of the code that said it did. We use mark comments to make it easy to find things in the document items view. You'll be implementing your own protocol for this extension later on in the course, but for now, it's okay to use mark and a colon with nothing after it. That just draws a horizontal dividing line. Use the fixit to get rid of convenience. Structs don't have to worry about inheritance, so the concept of a convenience initializer doesn't apply. And instead of this extension containing NS object overrides, you're going to implement equatable here. Equatable requires a static equality operator function and two instances of the type you're equating. That'll require a bit of a rewrite from the instance is equal method that takes an optional any. We'll use the naming convention sticker0 and sticker1, which follows the numbering convention of arrays and tuples. Tuples. Whichever. People say it both ways. The names don't get used externally, so you can use whatever you want. Next, delete the encode method. You'll be working on a replacement for that in the challenge. Now change the signature of the initializer to accept the heterogeneous dictionary you've set up. I see that you've marked this initializer as having the possibility of throwing an error. What type of error might it throw? Well, the simplest possible option is just a struct that adheres to the error protocol. You can start with that and feel free to add more information and complexity to it later if it ever becomes helpful. Instead of returning nil, throw an initialization error if things go wrong. You don't have a coder anymore, so you need to change these four decode calls. Instead, use lookups into dictionary. That works for everything but normalized position. Move its lookup into the guard statement, and first store the result in an intermediate normalized position dictionary. If looking that up succeeds, then casting to the core foundation dictionary you expect is guaranteed to succeed. Make normalized position to CG point using that casted value as its dictionary representation. Then we can use the result to initialize normalized position. And now let's go do all of the same work again for scene.swift. Oh, you did it already. Don't worry. There's still one thing you need to change in the new initializer. 
I see. There aren't any stickers yet. So first, in the guard statement, ensure that you get sticker dictionaries, which is that array of heterogeneous dictionaries you created. Make sure you get these nested brackets right. Then, you can map that to the necessary stickers array using the initializer you just wrote, which creates a sticker from a dictionary. That initializer might throw an error, so preface the conversion with the try keyword. Head to the playground. And let's initialize a scene. Try storing your reconstructed scene in a do block, and use two catch blocks to potentially handle either of the errors that a scene's new initializer might throw. Scene.initialization error, or sticker.initialization error. Initialization error doesn't autocomplete for me. Hopefully it does for you. So for example, if you get a key wrong for one of the stickers, change name to gibberish, and then try to make a scene from scene dictionary, you'll get a sticker initialization error. And if you maybe use the wrong type for one of your scene values, you'll get a scene initialization error. But otherwise, we're not getting any errors, so let's test that the reconstructed scene is equal to the original scene. It is. Let's have a look at its view to celebrate. Squirrel power! That's it for this video tutorial, and now we have a challenge waiting for you. Now that you've gone through the tedious process of manually creating a dictionary that represents the savable data for a Swift type instance, you'll probably never want to do it again. Your challenge for this video is to automate the bulk of the process using Swift's mirror type. We hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you as if through a mirror next time.